Hello, in this video I will try to go back to the basics, to the theory about physics and neutronics of reactors to let people go more in-depth into the knowledge of these reac nuclear reactor simulators. And by the way, I changed my background picture. This is uh, by the painter Jacques-Louis David, a French painter, and the name of this painting is Leonie de Thermopyle, or in English, Leonidas in the Thermopyle, which you may know this scene from the movie 300. Let's go to the simulator. Okay, so we we'll start from the beginning. Beginning. We see the tasks that start by A, from A01 to A016. These are the tasks that are devoted to physics and neutronics of nuclear reactors. We already did some, some tasks of the group C, or we started something in rated state operation, but mainly I was trying to do experiments or try to do strange things with the reactor. Now we will do A01 and we will try to understand the different um, loading, file loading patterns that we can have or that this simulator is giving to us, which are loading 1 and loading 5. So I will start the task A01 with loading 1 first. And we'll play the simulation and we'll see immediately how the simulation time accelerates, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it accelerated to 30,000. And the model, the core model, so the neutron re reactor model went to st static mode. So here we don't have transients, we don't need to care about xenon poisoning and things like that. The interaction with the 1C model, which is the primary hydro thermohydraulic circuit model is also disconnected and the boron exchange is also disconnected. So here we just have a static model in which you have constant neutron power. We see here 9.9 .9 exponent 1, which is this 99% here. And we don't have anything else. So here we will just have a look how the enrichment of the foil elements is uh, scattered across the reactor. So while the time is advancing, we are already at the hour 300 of simulation time. And uh, we see how the neutron production, because here we have the N selected. If we had the P, we will see the thermal power generated, but here we have the neutron emission of each uh, foil rod. In this blue uh, rainbow scale, we have the, the hottest elements in terms of neutron generation here in the center and the coldest in the surrounding. Let's have a look to the GRP window, which gives us the evolution of several parameters. For parameters and power in the red line, neutron power, thermal power, the magenta, and uh, basically, basically this is stable with these straight lines. Okay, we go to parameters. Here's where we will focus in this video. Here we have in the different options. I will read from my notes one by one. Okay, relative power. I don't need to read from my notes. It's written here. Power, heating in degrees from before, between before and after the water entering the reactor in each fuel assembly. Output temperature, temperature of the water in the hot, in the hot side. So it's the upper side because the cold water is entering. Actually, the water is entering from the upper part of the reactor, going down using a deflector that surrounds the reactor. In the bottom of the reactor, the water mm, changes the direction and goes up through the core of the reactor, so through through the foil elements. And during this path, it increases the temperature, and it reaches the top part. And this is the temperature, the temperature that is displayed. It's the top part temperature. The diagrams in the right are the diagrams corresponding to the longitudinal. Output temperature. Is this temperature or neutron? Yes, this is activity. So this is neutron, it seems. 
Okay, so each time we select a parameter, like the relative power, two file assemblies will be highlighted. These are the minimum and the maximum of all the reactors. The green is the minimum, the pink is the maximum. And these two plots are the longitudinal profile of a neutron power from the minimum, it's the upper one, and the maximum, the lower one. Then we have the reserve before boiling, because this is a pressurized um, uh, reactor, we can have temperatures higher than 100 degrees and water is not yet boiling. So this is the reserve. It means if, for instance, this foil assembly here, if we increase 26 degrees more the temperature, it will start boiling. So this is the reserve, the safe margin before boiling. Foil enrichment, burn up, and offset. So the most interesting here is the enrichment. <coughs> We see 4.23, 3, 2, etc. This is the pattern in which this reactor has been loaded after a refueling. And maybe to be more clear, because here there are a lot of numbers, but we don't have time to look one by one in, the, in this video. We will go to the 3D plot, which shows the same numerical values as the previous tab, but in this uh, colorful 3D layout. So if we select file enrichment, we see that the most enriched foil elements are in the boundary of the reactor. So this is the 4.4 enrichment. It means 4.4 content of uranium-235 isotope. And the least enriched is in the center, which is an enrichment of 2. 2% 2 of uranium-235. And now I went back to the GRP plot and we see that bor boron is decreasing the concentration we have switched on this auto boron shim which uh, changes boron concentration to keep constant the neutron production of this reactor and we see that it's decreasing why is this happening let's remind that the control rods are all withdrawn group 10 is withdrawn up to 80 percent and this is not moving so we are controlling reactivity of the reactor just by boron decrease because fuel is being burned up. We have here the burn up output. We see as this increases as hours are increasing. We are, we are at around uh, more than 100 days of operation here. And we see how the burn up increase. It means we have less feasible materials in the rods. Consequently, reactivity decreases, so we need to decrease the boron concentration, which is a neutron absorber, to keep reactivity constant. And we can see this very clear in this plot. Now I need to readjust the scale, scale by limits, TV, which stands for the boron tank. And we see how the red line is constant. It is the neut neutron power, and the boron is have been decreased at a constant rate to keep this. We are still far from zero, so we are at six minutes of real time, 3,000 hours of simulation time. I will not wait this to reach to zero, but I will tell you what would happen when this reaches zero. It means we cannot uh, increase reactivity in any other way. Actually, we have a bit of margin of reactivity if we would draw the group 10 up to 100%. But after we are at 100% in group 10 and the boron concentration is close to zero, we cannot increase reactivity anymore. And what we will see in this plot is that the red line starts to decrease in a linear fashion, more or less. And this means that we are reaching the refueling time. We don't need to refuel exactly when it starts to go down, but when it goes down like below of 80 or 70% of the nominal power, then the operator will have to, to plan a refueling because otherwise it will start losing money because the power plant is not operating at the full nominal power, so it's producing less electricity. Okay, so let's just keep in mind this shape. This is the enrichment 3D shape, so we have more enrichment in the, in the surroundings and less in the center. We'll also have a look in the reserve before boiling we are at around between 22 and 20, 37 degrees. 
and what else can we check? We can check the offset. We are between 2 and 10. And these spikes are the group 10 rods inserted to control the reactivity. So, yes, now it's selected group 10. We see the yellow dots, which are these six rod elements that are the ones that we can vary to change reactivity. And this in homogeneity in the longitudinal axis of the reactor is what's causing this offset, it's causing, it's causing these six spikes. If I totally withdraw now this uh, group 10, we'll see the spikes disappearing and all the offset will be between 2.3 and 5, more or less. Okay, so we spent around 10 minutes with this loading file loading. I will stop the simulation and we will see now the loading number 5. So we start the same task. Okay, we start the simulation and we already see that the color pattern of the reactor is slightly different than before. We have more blue areas mainly in the center. We didn't have this blue area in the center before. Very interesting. And we see how the exchange models already disconnected from the 1C model and the 1C model, both thermohydraulic and boron exchange. And we see already that the boron sheet meets at the minimum position trying to compensate for the burn up of well. If we look at the graph, we already see the boron decreasing at a constant rate. Why is decreasing at a constant rate? Because boron concentration has almost a linear relation at a concentration we are working with. It has almost a linear relation uh, with the reactivity. And we are at nominal power. It means the burn up is linear with time. We are burning up the same quantity of fuel every day. So let's have a look around. We see the same position of the group 10. So it's exactly 80% as before. We see the burn up increasing as days advance. We're at 500 hours of simulation now. The same acceleration of before, 30,000. And now we can go, we already saw this tab. We are not interested in this today. We go to see this. So we go directly to burn up, no, to fire enrichment. And we see many more foil assemblies at 4.23, maybe, than before. I'm not sure. We'll look at the 3D plot. Foil enrichment. This is the foil enrichment, enrichment tab. And we see, in the other one, we saw like a basin with the tips at 4.4, and then a depression in the center at around 2. Here we have the foil enrichment Mostly of the full assemblies are at 4.4 and some of them are at 3, which are these spikes going down. So here we see a reactor layout, overall much more enriched, also more homogeneous in the highest enrichment portion of the full assemblies and just some spikes going down in enrichment to 3. Let's see how this affects other variables like production of heat. Well, this is uh, power, relative power, but it's very similar, if not equal to heat shape or heating. And we see this depression in the central part of the core due to this different pattern. Very interesting. Let's see the reserve before boiling between 22 and 35. Similar magnitude as before, but we have this different shape here. You have a higher reserve in the central area, while we had, while before, we, this was the most desfavorable one at around 22 degrees of margin. This is the burn up. And this is very interesting enrichment layout. And finally, the offset 
in which we still have these six spikes, as I told you, because we are using the group 10 to regulate the reactivity. So this is, these are the six spikes of offset created in the longitudinal um, dimension of this reactor. Okay, we can also have a look into the loss of symmetry, but this is not many, not, not very meaningful unless we have a loss of symmetry situation like uh, one of the recirculation pumps in the primary goes off, so we will have a, a symmetric entry of water in the, into the reactor or we withdraw some of the fuel assemblies asymmetrically, which we will not do usually unless we are doing some strange test or application. So let's look at it. This quite meaningless, I have to say, because this movement here is just numerical noise and these spikes here are, well, just meaningless. It, they are giving us no information at the moment. Let's look back here. We are at the hour 2000, so this is almost 100 days of simulation. Let's adjust the vertical axis. Scale by limits TV. And we're at a concentration of 2.2. I wish I could accelerate more time just to reach to zero because now we are at 16 minutes of total video time. I don't want to, to make too long videos, otherwise, it's tiring to follow. But this, as I told you before, when the blue line reaches almost zero, we cannot decrease any more boron and then the red line will start to decrease in a, in a linear fashion. Until we reach a point in which the operator of the plant decides to shut down the plant, make a call, shut down, disassemble the reactor, and substitute more or less one third of the used foil assemblies by new and rich ones. We also, I think we cannot see the foil enrichment decrease as you see, 100 days of simulation passed and we are still at the initial values, 4.4. I think this is because we are using a static model, which it's not really modeling the nuclear reactions, it's just keeping this number artificially at nominal value and uh, that's it. So it, it seems it's not modeling the, the foil burn up really, because we cannot see here. I cannot give all explanation for the moment. Okay, I hope this was useful. See you in the next video. Bye.